Hello, Sunny Bonani, Sunny Bonani. Welcome back to another live series with Tenjiwe Quarantine Diaries. Today, I am joined by some of the best and the most hardworking producers from the continent of Africa. We know our continent is rich not only just with resources, but we have very beautiful and very rich cultures and stories. Hollywood makes a lot of money. We've seen their stars, they are super rich from telling stories, sometimes from telling our own stories. My question today is, as the continent of Africa, why are we not telling our own stories? Why are we doing the same thing that we do to our natural resources, allowing other people to come, take them from outside countries and go and use them to make profit? I'm joined by producers from different countries around the continent. First, I will introduce you to a producer from Zambia, Coin, and a producer from South Africa, Zamo Misi. Welcome. Hi, hi, hi. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Coin, please introduce yourself and tell us that you do in Zambia. Uh, my name is Coin from uh, Lusaka, Zambia, TV producer and uh, music producer as well. Um, I create TV shows um, for, uh, for quite a number of clients, um, both local and international, um, documentaries um, for quite a number of NGOs. And um, yeah, basically that's, that's my line of work. I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I tell stories through film uh, for TV for film for different platforms what are some Sorry? of the, what are some of the TV stuff or movies that you have produced um i've produced i've created and produced shows like there's a there's a show it's quite popular in southern africa it sits on uh, zambezi magic uh, it's called my kitchen party it's a reality TV show. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, there's a drama series, um, quite popular in Cotton Gila. Um, mm -hmm. Sits on Zambezi Magic as well, and yo, the list, the list is endless. The list is endless. You've done you know, a lot. So it's 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 we we we're pushing. We're trying to tell those African stories. And uh, Zamo Missy. Hi, hi. Yeah, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. And before you do that, I am now joined by another uh, producer uh, from Nigeria, Mr. Darlington Abuda. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Chairman. <laughs> Chairman. I'm good, though. I'm good. Thank you for joining us. We are Thank just you. in the introduction, so Zamo is just about to introduce herself, tell us what she does and what uh, projects she has worked on, what she has produced. Hello, my name is Zamo Misi. I'm a TV and film producer from South Africa. I've um, produced um, TV uh, sitcoms, uh, Meet the Kambules, Judge Tenji Kambule, and um, films, uh, Meet... Uh, which film? Films, uh, Brazzaville, uh, Johannesburg, uh, Angel, Iputalami, there's a third one, I forgot the name, but yeah, and uh, we are in pre-production of uh, yet another comedy um, rom-com. Thank you, Zamo. Mr. Darlington. Okay, uh, my name is Darlington Abuda. I'm a movie producer, writer, and promoter. Um, I've produced... Um, Titles such as 30 Days in Atlanta, um, A Trip to Jamaica, 10 Days in Sun City, when I worked with my very wonderful host here and the Chelly Day herself, Zamo, um, The Accidental Spy, where we work together again, um, Merry Men 1, Merry Men 2, and uh, a few TV programs like the A AY's Creep, The AY Show, Me and My Top 7. And Call to Bar, which is a web series currently running on, on YouTube. 
Thank you. Seems like yeah. you guys are working a lot. Yes. Uh, Coin, how is the industry in Zambia? Well, the, the, the industry in Zambia is pretty young. Like, it's it's pretty young, but coming up real fast. Um, real, real fast. Um, and it's becoming really, really competitive. You know, um, I mean, we, we, I'm, I'm talking of a place where I, I, I think almost every month um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm meeting producers who have produced probably two seasons uh, which is 13 episodes per season of drama series, fully done. And they're looking for where to take them. No, where, where can I take this? Where can I take this? And all that just gives me a sign like, yo, pe people are really, really, really working. You know, so the, the, the industry is, it's, it's really coming up really, really fast. And um, with lots of collaborations that we're seeing, I mean, working with people from, from across Africa, really, you know, um, like, Zamo and and um, Tenji way there's it's there's lots of collaborations that I've said happening down here you know um, there's another producer um, Albert a friend of mine Jim Eichel's here they did a, a, a movie um, premiere did pretty well here and I think they're working on season um, on part two sorry you know so it's it's coming up pretty well it's coming up pretty well and uh, Dalian General has seen that Nigeria has done wonders in terms of the industry with some of your movies especially the one that you produced uh, 30 days in atlanta making it even to the guinness book of records yeah. what is it that you are doing that we are not doing in other parts of africa um how do i say this Be on yeah. <laughs> there is a saying in Nigeria that we are, we are each person is his own um, is his own government. Each person is his own local government, you know. And when the movie industry started picking up again in the early two thousand, there was really no support from from the government. It was more. It was more of. Um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I okay, can. Super. It it was more of a business, a, um, an investor initiative. So people went in, and so it was primarily profit oriented. So um, as the business grew from the two thousand to date, which is about 20 years of this current um, phase of Nollywood in the country, it has been people investing money to try and make their money back. Um, there has been really no dependence of the government. So it's basically, uh, should I say, capitalist-oriented. It was private-oriented. Um, in the last five, ten years or so, the government is trying to come in. But because we started from the angle of putting in our money or partnering with people and then trying to make our money back. Um, that is how we have continued. So it has allowed us always try and put our best foot forward because we, there are really no grants here that you will say you make a film and even if it doesn't make money because it's a grant, um, it won't be painful to you. You are looking for at sea films and the rest no if a nigerian man is thinking of a film he's thinking of the bottom line he's thinking of how he's going to spend his money and then make that money back with profits so mm. that is what has really um, pushed us forward that is what that is the basically the the raw material in any nigerian producer um how to make our money back so i think because there has been no reliance from government and when the support came, the industry had already grown. It has not allowed anybody be lazy. So we are basically going in, knowing that it is my hard-earned money going into this place or the money I'm getting from investors, and I would want to go back to them for more tomorrow. So definitely, I want to put my best foot forward to ensure that what I'm putting this money in makes revenue and brings back returns for my investors. 
Yep. So uh, we are now being joined by another uh, fellow producer from Malawi, Kofi. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Please do introduce Hello. yourself and uh, let us know what project you have worked on. Um, my name is Kofi Samwa, and um, I work um, in Accra, Ghana, West Africa, and a creative director. Um, I've worked on a couple of uh, feature length films. Um, my last film is called Away Bus. The trailer is on YouTube, um, Away Bus. Before that, I did John and John, and then there is a uh, Calibers in China, I did uh, Amachi and the Day and a few others. So yeah, I'm glad to be here. And what are the challenges that you are facing in, in Ghana in terms of the film and industry? Um, like I'm sure it is in most parts of Africa, um, the major challenge has always been funding. You know, for me, there are two problems that I find you know, where we are funding and distribution networks. You know, film is business, and it looks to me like the business side, you know, of, of the industry is where all the challenges are coming from. You know, distribution. You know, sometimes we're able to make the films, but how we're able to sell the films is, is a big problem. We do not have major distribution, you know, companies. You know, where I come from, and I'm sure it's pretty much the same story, you know, across you know, a greater part of the African continent. And so, that for me is our biggest challenge, you know, distribution, where to sell our films, you know, where we, the, the different avenues or the different platforms are available for us to rake in revenue for money spent in making our films. Yeah, that's two very major challenges that. Thank you. Uh, Zamo Misi, what challenges do you face as a from South Africa? You know, in South Africa, um, the. Excuse me, Zamo, you, know, you have two devices on. No, no, no. No. Okay. Am I good? Okay. So, so basically, in South Africa, we, we have. Um, the issue of um well besides that the government doesn't really they do find we do have the incentives i'm not sure why this is making noise but we do have incentives in south africa uh but one main problem that we have is uh distribution is a big issue in south africa um you will make a film but uh, to go to work, to, 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 the channels are really really tough I mean, we, we still don't know what of um uh, sending our films to the channel or even being commissioned by the channel because it seems we have the one and the same people getting commissioned in different channels so so that's one major issue uh, and the second thing is uh i don't think we're patriotic enough in south africa like i'll make an example of Nigeria. In Nigeria, they will make their films. The cinemas will support them in terms of um, people pushing their films. And also, the, the, the people like the investors will come in. With us, we don't have those kind of people who will be able to invest in our films. If you have to do your film, you get money from your pocket, you, you, you may not have a place to, to distribute it. Yes, there are incentives to get from government, but um, I, I'm not sure if they work enough for everybody. If you work for certain people, it doesn't work for everybody. So that's that's the main thing. That's the main main thing. Thank you, Zamo. And um, Colin, what are the challenges that you face in Zambia? Mr. Coin. Coin. Yes, I lost you there. What are the challenges that you face as a film? Uh, Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Do you have any sort of funding in Zambia that you get from the public?
Sorry, you're saying the challenges that you face here as producers in the film industry? Yes. And also, do you get any help or incentive from your partner? Um, I, th I think that the challenges are basically, I would echo out what um, uh, Kofi just said and Zamo, um, it's 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 not it's it's financing basically you know an input for you to execute um, a, a story that you want to tell the way it should be told you know so I think funding is a big is a big deal um, we we don't have any film schools like established proper university way say I went to a university and I studied film I have a degree you know um, um, I think that grassroots level of nurturing that film telling talent we it's it's very weak in Zambia I think it only if, if at all there's anything it's up to college level uh, but I would have to confirm so that's not um, an accurate statistic of the number of colleges but I know up to college level we, we might have one or two um, and I think from from government, I think they're coming in. I'd, I'd be lying if I said the government is not giving us support. I think they're coming in. We, we're trying to form all these associations and the, they're always available, you know, where you actually sit down and meet the minister, you know, not where you go meet somebody who's who has to take you to the minister, you know, where you sit down, have a conversation. Um, they, they, they understand what you're looking for. And even even just the TV platforms that are here that are popping up, most of them are being inspired. They're, they're government inspiration, if I can put it, you know, where they're, they're encouraging people to open up TV stations. Um, and then we're, we're seeing these international platforms coming into, Z into Zambia and partnering with the government and empowering local producers to, um, to, 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 to tell stories. So I think, I think the government is coming in, um, but a lot can be done. There's always room for improvement. Uh South Africa and the rest of Africa, we are rich in stories and we are known to be storytellers. But I have seen a lot of our big stories. We are having some technical problems. I've lost everyone at the same time. So I will just wait for everyone to come back before as well. I am back. Kofi is back. Zamo, we still have you. We are waiting for Coin and Darlington to reconnect. I'm not sure if they can hear me. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I Zamo can and Kofi, yeah. can you hear yeah. me? I can hear you. Zamo? I can hear you. Kofi? I can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. I do not know what is happening. So we, we can continue as we wait for Tenji, yeah? Uh, I mean, I can see and hear everybody. What, what's up? Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Kofi, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Darlington, okay. are you there? Yeah, Darlington. I think yeah. I can hear All right, so, yeah, so... I, th I think we went through all the challenges from from Kofi to to, Zamo to to Darlington, and um, I, th I think I think a common analysis is is funding. Yeah. yeah. So that's the problem. Um, if, oh. if, if, if if we had <laughs> okay. Oh, we lost Darlington. Yeah. Oh, I'm back. What happened? Darlington is not. Oh, you need a crew. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe let's continue while Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know where, uh, what you guys were discussing when I was lost. Oh, we were, we were basically saying most, most of the time in general is, is, is the funding. That's what we, we, we were talking about. That the most problem is the general the general is the funding. Yeah, so the funding. For me, it's some very, very funny notes. I think it's funny for me. Yeah, it's coming from Zamo. But when, even when you said me, I could still hear that noise. Let me mute coin. Can you talk? Yeah. Coin, you are guilty. <laughs> guilty as charged, coin. They're guilty not coming coin. from you. <laughs> yeah, oh, that is in back. Okay. So coin, I'll just unmute you when you are Okay, so, so basically, what I was saying is that the, the yes, the, fi the, the, the funding is actually an issue, but uh, especially in South Africa, I'll talk for South Africa. The, the main problem that we also have is that our people are not, um, I don't want to say loyal, but they don't mostly watch the, 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 the movies, even if it means you want to take out your, your, your hard earned money to put, which we've done in our productions, we've done a lot, and we because we love film, we keep on doing it. But even if you take out your, your own money without any other funding and you, you produce the film, to get the place to distribute it is actually a problem. I, I remember with one of our production, which was ended up picked up by one of the channels, we decided that we're not going to sit and wait from people who, like we don't know whether they're going to come back to us, whether they take our production or not. We've decided to just put it and put it on YouTube. And we were like on YouTube like full time until one of the off the channels picked up and then it's like, oh, this is very good. It shouldn't just sit on YouTube, but we would like to, to actually uh, commission it or, or rather, rather license it. So that's, that, 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 that's how. So we, we, we decided, okay, we're not going to wait on anyone. Let's just continue and do what we do. And then we, 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 that's how it happened. And then they picked it up and then they wanted more and more from us, which was really, really good. But um, the, the main problem here in South Africa, we like we've been in film for as long as we have been, but we still don't know what's the criteria for for for, for channel to say, okay, fine, we want. We've we've done pitches like many pitches, nothing happens, and you you like see, oh, okay, there's something playing there, but the, I think mine was better. I guess everybody will think theirs is better, but I know that ours was better, and you like they commissioned something else, but then what's the criteria? Because we also went to to to, to pitch and nothing happened. So so there, there's still that that issue of like. You know who you know. It's like it's like generally that's what we, we, we end up, uh, up uh, concluding to say. Okay, maybe it's who we know. Maybe we don't know the right people. Um, I, I, I can't hear uh, Zamo. Hmm? Um, okay. We are. We seem to be having the same problem of distribution and funding. And obviously, as long as we do not have the funds and we do not have distribution, because I've seen African stories being told by Hollywood and doing very well. So it can't be anything wrong with our stories. I've seen African stories being faked by Hollywood and doing very well. And when you say distribution, I think there's also a problem. I don't know if it's mental slavery within our audiences. Because when shows like uh, Black Panther or other Hollywood movies that are coming to Africa to tell our, our stories, they do very well. They make billions, which means we do have an audience that is to go out and pay to support movies. They're just not willing to support African producers. How do we solve that problem? Mm. Mr. Darlington, I'd like to get an answer from you because in Nigeria, you seem to be doing very well in terms of audiences supporting you, not just in Nigeria, but even Nigerians in the diaspora. What advice can you give us? What are we doing wrong in other parts of Africa? Hmm. Okay. Um, it's, a growing, it's a growing support um, in Nigeria. What has happened over the past few years is we have increased not just the quality of our storytelling, but also the technical quality of our content. So as the cinema culture has grown in the country, 
and people are appreciating um, films coming from Hollywood and uh, the European movie, London ETC. Um, we've tried to improve our technical quality to meet this. So you are, so you are not just going into the cinema looking for just a story because before now, even Nigerians would prefer to see a Hollywood film if, even if a Hollywood film is opening the same day. But as we increased uh, our technical quality, as we increased our storytelling ability, and it has been an ongoing work, especially for the past, um, let me say six years, that's really, that's when it's really uh, picked up on the side. We have tried to look at our, at our audiences. What do they want? What do they enjoy in these titles? What is the, why will a, a, a typical Nigerian cinema goer want to watch a Fast and Furious and not a Nigerian film? So even though in a lot of cases, our production budgets are like the fees for some of the actors. So our production budgets may never be up to a fee of an A-list Hollywood actor. We have tried to utilize that budget in such a way that given the resources we have, our technical quality would be appreciated even shown outside the shores of this country. For example, last year we released Merry Men 2, the sequel. And we did a premiere in Washington, which was attended by a lot of TV, movie, socialites from the States and some Nigerians. And from the audience, even from the non-Africans that attended the premiere, the story got across to them and they enjoyed the story. They understood the story. So it was appreciated not just by the Nigerians, in the room, but also by the non-Nigerians, non-Africans in the room. And that is where I think as Africans, as African filmmakers, we should begin to seriously look at. For a long time before now, we have tried to tell our stories to ourselves. And then if I tell a Nigerian story, by the time it goes to the Ghanaian cinema, or to South Africa, they will not understand it, they will not enjoy it. A Ghanaian tells his story, he brings it to the Nigerian cinema, and we don't understand it, we don't enjoy it. So there is no patronage from us for that film. It's only local patronage. But we see that a lot of times when they do films in Hollywood, even when they do films that celebrate America as a superpower, as the savior of the world, as whatever, they still try and make the language of the film, the storytelling of the film as international as possible. But using an example that I think other countries are beginning to employ, there is a series from, I believe, Spain, which um, um, La Casa de uh, Money Heist. Money Heist, yeah. Everybody seems to enjoy these days. And the reason why it is enjoyable is that even though the story is Spanish, it's a local story told with international language. It's a, it, it was said, I'm not using the, the language in which they said it because it was, it was redubbed in England. Not, but the story of the film, it is portrayed in a way that even when I'm watching it in Nigeria, it grips me. The story grips me. I am identifying with the characters. I, I am identifying the, the person who they are calling a fool in the film or the... Or the, um, um, or the, the, the the, the bank guy from season one, season two, Arturito. I'm annoyed with him just the same way everybody else across the world is annoyed. So they have told the story in such a way that it is, though from Spain, local to Spain, integral to Spain, but the language which we they have used is understood by everyone. And it's not because they dubbed in English, no, because there are different programs that have been dubbed in English that I would, people in Nigeria or in different parts of the world would still not understand, would still not enjoy. So I think one of the ways to get our films to have both local and international appeal is to tell our local stories, celebrate ourselves, but not tell it as if we are telling um, 
just Nigerians or just South Africans' story. Tell it with a language that, even though it's a Nigerian film, someone from South Africa watching it would understand the essence, the story of the film. That way he will enjoy it. That way he would want to go and watch it. Uh, they did Black Panther, and they used Americans or Black Americans to portray South Africans, Nigerians, and whatever within the film. Now, they could easily have used us, hey, but they didn't, well and good. But then if we tell that kind of story here, primarily before now, we would tell it in such a way that I haven't shown it in Nigeria. If I take that same film to, to, to Ghana, Mr. Kofi would watch the film and maybe enjoy a third of it and not really enjoy it. So that way, it's not gripping him. Mm. But I think as the mistake we were making before in Nigeria was we felt our country was where our revenue was coming from. So we're telling our stories for our country because once we, once, at least once they paid us, we are okay. But in recent times, we have come to understand that there are Nigerians everywhere. Our films on Netflix being appreciated by Nigerians who either traveled to these other nations or Nigerians who were born there and who are testing for things from home. The appreciation of these titles have shown us that, okay, if we tell our stories in such a way that even everybody can understand, it gives every story an international appeal. So it's not as if I'm going to be doing a film with a $50 million budget. No, I, I don't have the, the market here to make back that revenue. But I'm going to be doing a film with my budget, but tell my story in such a way that Tenjiwe would enjoy it, Zamo would enjoy it, Mr. Kofi would enjoy it, Mr. Coin. Everywhere it is shown, it would have that international appeal. I think that is what is key for African filmmakers. Do not lose your story. Do not try and tell a Nigerian story with a Hollywood slant. Don't do that. They are doing theirs already. Tell our story. Tell your story, but with an international appeal. Tell your story in such a way that, you know, the truth is Africa, I, I know of Nigeria, and I think it was integral to Africa. We were good at storytelling. We had stories. I still remember the, the stories of Shaka the Zulu that I read when I was a child and the, the films and stuff that came out of it. The stories from of the president who they said ate human flesh in a different country. You know, we have stories and we are very good storytellers, but maybe it was the period of colonization and our fathers who were still close to the era of those who were colonized and were still trying to be subservient to their colonial masters and still wanting to speak English in the British way, forgetting their roots, that made the story not really have any root anywhere. So Africans did not enjoy it, and those they were trying to tell also did not enjoy it. So I think when we take time to tell our story, but with a language that everybody will understand, tell our story with an international language, then we would be, that those stories would play anywhere, and whether whites or blacks, it would be enjoyed. That's what I think. Mm. Do you want Anything to that? Um, you know, um, I, I, I totally agree with with, uh, with Darlington. Um, it, it has to be like that. We, we have to tell our story our way, but it must have an international appeal. So I, I guess another another reason why the I think the Nigerian movies works also is is, is, is that they, they've really upped their game too much. In South Africa, we've always been doing high quality movies, but it was not having the same reach that as Nigerian movies. So it's really they've upped their game in terms of quality. They've upped their game in terms of stories. It's it's, it's always have international appeal. So um, yeah, yeah, it's it's doing very very well. Uh, we still have a lot to do. In basically, I think I think our movies like in South Africa, we still have like high quality, but it's uh, there's still a problem somewhere which I can't really tap into. Like, like for example, just for TV, something that's that's local that doesn't that's not even international. I think there's also still the issue of apartheid. Unfortunately, it's there. You will find that um, uh, the, the channels that are actually catering for, for black movies, where you, they will commission us to do black movies, they'll give us very, very, like not even 50% of what they will give the channel that's actually catering for, for white people. It's there. It's and we expected to deliver the same. And we do deliver the same. 
So, so you will have an issue of, of um, having uh, people complaining about black people paying them less and white people paying them more. We, we can't be at the same part if we're not getting the same budget and yet we need to deliver the same kind of quality. So that's another issue that we have. Uh, for, from myself, one of the biggest problems that I have seen with South African productions, especially as someone who travels and I'm very much invested in other African cultures, is number one, we do not want to own our identity. We are do we, we are Hollywood fake. We are not telling an authentic South African story. Number so that never gonna cross the border because people want to know about you. Starting from our accent. If you're watching a South African film, usually 10 minutes is enough. Because it's it, it's not like you watch a Nigerian story, you know this is Nigeria. You watch a, 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 a Zambian story, you know this is Zambia. You know about the culture, and it doesn't always have to portray poverty. And in South Africa, even our TV, our television, the minute you see a truly authentic South African story, it's about killing each other, and it's about witchcraft. We think that is what's authentic about being South African. I think we can learn from other uh, African countries and tell positive stories. So it was like 10 days in Atlanta. There was no witchcraft, but it was an African story. We need to be able to tell stories and tell the reality. Reality shows, South African reality shows all portray a black South African in a very negative manner. It's all about people waking up. It's, all, it's just, it, 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 it makes you wanna cry to walk because it doesn't portray a black person in a positive manner. You go to Zambia. You watch things like My Kitchen Party. It's still a reality show, but it's not about cheating, and it's not copied from an American context. So it's telling you what happens in Zambia before a woman gets married. Even the positive stories, like there's a show that I will not name about people getting married. It's like they go and look for all the mistakes that can happen. They never show us the positive show, the good part of, of marriage. They will look for things that it's like it's become a joke. Our culture has become a joke. Mm -hmm. I think we need to 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 free ourselves from mental slavery. And that will reflect in our storytelling as well. Of marriage. They will look for things that it's like it's become a joke. Our culture has become a joke. Mm -hmm. And we need to 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 free ourselves from mental slavery. And that will result in our storytelling as well. Marriage. You will look for things that say it's become a joke, our health has become a joke. We need to go to free ourselves from the same thing. I don't know what is happening. It's repeating. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah, it was doing that. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah that's, that's true. Anything to add, Mr. Coffee? Yes, um, uh, the only thing I want to well, add um, is what um, 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 Darlington said, um, film language, which is very key. But for me, I think that you know, um, that could not be using, we are unable to you know, solve the very major you know, problems um, in, our, in our industry. I mean, um, what we seem to forget that is possible to happen is that the different industries of the world will not naturally, you know, wish that we get to the level where we are able to rub shoulders with them. Yeah. You know, because it is the same market. If we get big, it is the same market we are all going to be um, working for or targeting. You know, and so naturally, it would not. You see, that is why they are able to come in here take our stories and tell them almost like we're telling it on your behalf you it's know. the same thing that they that do is, with their say that again i'm saying it's the same thing they do with our resources like they take our home come back and tell it exactly <laughs> exactly so they make it look like they're telling it on our behalf and the trick is for them to be able to get into our market the market we're already struggling with. We want to get into that space as well. And so for me, I think that um, over the years, filmmaking 
across Africa has really improved. Of course, we cannot compare all the budgets in the world, you know, we cannot, we may not have all the funding in the world to make the film, but technically, even for the minutest budget, film in Africa over the years has improved. The challenge where I see there to be a problem, and, and, and then you, you mentioned, it, it is not as if we are not telling our stories, it's not as if we are not speaking the film language like Darlington said, it is not as if we are we are we are not improved we've not improved on production quality the problem is just that the those who understand the business of film are not listening to us they know our content <laughs> they do know our content they know we exist they know we have a market but they just will not that is why now netflix is taking over Hollywood is suffering from the influence of Netflix. It is the same market. Now, Netflix wants to get into Africa. Netflix has distribution agents that they deal with. Netflix says we do not want to deal with individual producers. Why so? Why would Netflix not want to deal with individual producers? And then the same agencies that Netflix say, okay, these are the agencies that we are working with. So it has to be through them. Those are not African agencies. These are foreign agencies. So we have to still be working for them. Now, when we have local portals, local video platforms that are supposed to be making us feel like the way that we makes us feel, giving us cash, paying us off our content, then they come and they tell us about revenue split. Uh, bring your content, we put it on our site, we put it on our platform, and per number of views, you know, we split revenue. That's unforeseen revenue. Like, I'm not sure any of us, Coin, Dalentin, uh, Missy, any of us want that. We want to be paid off our content. We want you to give us cash so that we can make our next film and not wait for people to watch before we go and make our next film. You know? And so for me, the problem goes beyond what we are producing. The problem goes beyond what we are producing. One of the things maybe if we did could help attract investors, could help attract a lot more funding, could help give us some level of, some pedigree, some level, level of um, repertoire would be if we were able to come together to control numbers. That would be very key, very, very key. So that when I'm, I live, I sit in Ghana here and I make a film, I know that automatically my film is going to be seen in Nigeria, it's going to be seen in the Zambia, it's going to be seen in South Africa, it's going to be seen in Zimbabwe, it's going to be seen in all African countries because there's a network. So when Darlington makes a film, he doesn't have to worry about coming to Ghana, I'm here. So when I make a film, I don't have to worry about a coin is there. You know, if we're able to come together and form that network, we become more powerful. You know, we can control them. We can control what the people watch. We can control our prices. We can control how much Netflix must pay us, how much the agencies must pay us to put our phones on the airlines. And then, because sometimes when you look at, when I look at some of these deals, like our films on Netflix, and I look at the figures, and I know how much they would probably give, you know, other produce it. So we in Ghana here, we feel that South Africa is, you guys are lucky. We feel that we, you guys have it so smooth, you know. We feel that you guys have all the distribution agencies, you guys have all the funding, you know, platforms that fill up. That is how we feel about South Africa. Even Nigeria, next door, we feel that Nigeria is getting a lot of support, even from government. We feel that Nigerians are on some, you know, silver platter, you know, like you guys are you know, it's all cool for you, you know. So we'd always use South Africa as an example. Oh, you see South Africans, they are getting money to make big films because we are only being made to see certain kinds of films produced by the huge producers whose CEOs are probably sitting in America. We are made to see certain Nigerian films that were sponsored by some governor somewhere. We are made to believe that these films are the standard of the entire country's industry. And so hearing Zamomisi saying that, oh, South Africa, we don't have this, I'm like, what? You sure you're from South Africa? Because that's not the story we're hearing. 
hearing darling things say oh nigeria we are also i'm like are you sure you guys are here in nigeria because that's not what we are hearing so it means that we can be we have the power to control the market we as the individual producer we have the power to control them we have the power to say that no we will not accept this film we have the power to say these films for this period of time must be on your portal we have the power to say that this is how much if you give us this much to put our film on your portal it's unacceptable until we do that we would always struggle because don't forget the industry is not flat in any of our countries here in ghana you have producers that are up there we have producers you know all we are all independent producers but there are different levels but at least a good number must be able to come together in the different countries to be able to form a force to deal with some of these issues other than that it would be the same stories for all the years to come i totally agree with that because in africa we have over 1.2 billion people that's a lot of people a lot and when you count how much money america made from africa from their entertainment they made mm -hmm. from africa and then american actor or musician before they even did their film they are named international musicians. They haven't even left their state, let alone you know, the country. But we look down upon ourselves, we look down upon our. Uh, that's what we do to reach out to those 1.2 billion people. It's not even about because of poverty. It's just when you spend the money. I don't know what's wrong with my mind. Can I hear? Yeah, I think we have to mute our. Yeah, I think it was it's when too many mics are on. So as Africa, I think we do need to come up with solutions on number one, how do we educate our audience? Because our audience doesn't know, even our talent, the actors think producers are the ones chowing their money. Right now we are on lockdown, actors, uh concerned and people are worried now oh we thought actors were making money and actors are already broke and they think it is you guys the producers that are taking the actors money because they don't see you you're not on tv we don't see you on screen we, we think that people who make the shows are the faces we see so we solve number one that problem of actors and audiences thinking that producers because people don't know how much you have to spend to make a film and all that Number two, how do we unite and reach out to that 1.2 billion people without wanting America to approve us, without wanting Hollywood to approve us? How do we make our own uh, industry in Africa without, why are we, why am I passing Zimbabwe and Zambia and wanting to go all the way to Hollywood? Uh, please unmute your mics. Oh, mine is. I have. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, before we finish, yeah, before we go on, we have another colleague who's now joining us all the way from Malawi, KBG, Kelvin Before Gumbi. This is why Africa is not accepted in Hollywood. We are late. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I knew you were not going to be late. Yeah. So how do how do, how do we solve that problem? And let me just uh, update Calvin. We are talking about the issue yeah. of how do we cross borders and create our own African industry and stop chasing Hollywood. Because if we have over 1.2 billion people in Africa, why are we going for Hollywood? Why are we chasing them? Why can't we make form an industry in Africa for African audiences? Yeah, okay. May I, I guess um, it would be about education. It's not, uh, the issue is not, I, it's doing that thing again. Can you can you the mic, uh, thank you. You mute mine. Okay. 
So, so I mean, I'm, I'm, I think it's, it's about education. We need to educate our people. I don't know how, but we can. I mean, if, 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 if I would still go back to, to the issue of Nigeria. If Nigeria is able to, 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 to have their people supporting, although it's not always, it didn't just become that smooth. It's, it, it, it's Nigerian people are loyal to their people. That, that's, that's one thing that we need to understand. If we can actually educate our people, I don't know how we're going to make our people understand that they have to be loyal to what we do and then uh, things will, will be fine but the thing is we have to know how to do it how how do you how do you get people to be loyal to you? and again i think it's it's it, it, this thing is kind of cultural nigerian are, are actually brought up in a way that they they understand that uh, you help one another you know you 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 move each other forward and i, I i'll talk about south africa I, I don't think we have that one that thing uh, in south africa at all we don't have that thing at all. I'm not saying everybody, but majority of our people are not like that kind of together. Like like the same example that if your movie stay is playing and you are South African, you'll find very I can count movies in South Africa that ever made profit, you know. But every time international movies, Hollywood movies come to South Africa, they make money. Like guaranteed, they make money. And and we must also understand that uh, the cinema is also our business. And and. If if you if they get movies from Hollywood and that are making money, they'll have your movie stay there for 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 a little while, not for long, as long as uh, American movies. You will have I'll have my movie staying there. They'll be like, okay, we'll give you certain uh, um, certain cinemas. They don't give you all the cinemas. They'll choose the cinemas where they know that oh, there are more lo lot of black people in this area. Then they will keep your your movie there, and it won't be for as long as how they keep American movies. They also do business. But this is all because of our people. Our people are not supporting us. We need to have a way of talking to pe our people. I don't know how, but we need to find a solution as to how are we going to make our people loyal to us? How do we make our people uh, want to watch our movies? It's not like our movies are not good. They are good movies, but for some reason, they will prefer those kind of movies that are coming from Hollywood, and they won't support our movies. I, I, think, that, I think that's what we need to work on. Uh, I don't know about other countries, but in South Africa, there's a lot of mental slavery that we need to get out of. Number one, we need to appreciate and accept that we are Africans. I've had very big people saying I'm going to Africa, as if South Africa is not in Africa, even in the name. But they'll tell you, oh, when I went to Africa, you're like, we were born in Africa, you live in Africa. <laughs> so it's a lot of mental slavery and also ownership. Uh, countries like Nigeria, you go to a movie house, it's owned by a black person. You go to a hotel, it's owned by a black person. In South Africa, we do not own anything. We do not own our movie houses. We, so our uh, everything lies on the white person's hands. I'm sorry if you think I'm being racist, but it's just facts, it's what happens. Sometimes I even wonder if we even own our own president because nothing is owned by us. So even when you go and talk to people, they're not decision makers. They just puppets put there, giving a, a, a name, CEO or director, but they can't really make decisions. So we need to just we're building our own cinemas where we are owning our own things. Because it's, it's so sad to see our stories doing exactly what our African stories are rich. Our stories are rich. We have a culture. So see our stories doing the same thing that our gold has been doing. It's mined in Johannesburg and Kimberley, and it comes back being sold as gold from American Swiss. And that's exactly what's happening to our stories. So we need to find solutions as Africans together, because we can't do it alone. They say, uh, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. So what what can we do, KPG? Let me unmute unmute your mic. It's muted. It's not. Oh, is it? It is. <laughs> Sorry. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. All right. Yeah. So first of all, we don't really own anything. Um, I I agree on on that on that point that uh, most of us, like in Africa, we've got all these. Um, um, stories, as you're saying, like, for example, we had um, this movie, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Um, it was shot here, you know, that's our story. Everything that was said, that was um, shot, the storyline, everything from the 
start to the end. That is Malawian content. But then it wasn't done by us. Even the main actor was not from Malawi, you see. So um, we need to come to a place where uh, we, we, we find either resources or team up like, like what we've done here. Um, imagine if we all come together with our resources and just say, you know what, guys, let's, let's work on a movie. You know, because I know that Netflix right now is, is getting movies from Africa. But then most producers, even as Africans, basically, I feel like we don't work together. So we want to progress by ourselves. So if I have a link to or even equipment, I just want to make a name for myself. I don't want to come out and say, guys, this is what I have. Can we work together so that we can come up with uh, something tangible or something that we can go out there and, and present as a collective? We don't work as collectives. So first of all, I feel like we have to work as collectives, um, like what we've done here. If it can, if it can really like advance into something big, then great. Uh, the other thing was um, we talked about um, uh, owning cinemas and stuff because I feel like this whole thing is about owning systems. And Africans, we don't really have systems, you know. Um, so you can start. We can have an idea, a bright idea, but you don't have copyright systems that really like uh, work in your favor. And you see that when you post it or when you tell someone your idea has been stolen, they will patent it or copyright it somewhere else. When you are ready with the money, someone else has done it. So we need to create our own systems that work for Africans because the systems from there, they don't work here. And that's why we've been stuck here because we've been trying to like get that system and try to operate it in an African uh, setting and it doesn't work. So I, I, I applaud Nigerians because they've done, they've mastered the art. They know that their movies and they know who are consuming and they really push uh, for the consumers um, that they know will really like watch their content. So we need to come to a place where we know and understand our target audience, how they consume the data or how they, they watch the, the stuff on, on, online. Because um, the other thing even in Malawi is people don't subscribe to YouTube channels. You can be as famous as 50 Cent. <laughs> You, uh, it's crazy, guys. You can be as famous as 50 Cent. You post a video on YouTube. Um, you just, you have three views. But when you're walking in the streets, people are talking about your video. You'll be like, really? how did you watch my video? I only have three views. But you, you guys know about my stuff. So we need to, like, come to a place where we are uh, raise awareness to people. They should understand that when they go on YouTube and watch our movies, there's a chance that we'll get paid. You have something, you know? So, yeah, so those are like the two cents, something that I had to like share on, on, on top of what you say. They download stuff. <laughs> Anything to add, uh, coffee? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think he, he mentioned one area that I, I, I entered on, you know, coming together, you know, that's that could make a very huge significant difference you know in 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 our fight for relevance you know across the world because as it is now it's almost like you know we are all fighting very individual uh, uh, battles you know it's like each one for himself god for us all you know and so i think that that bit is very crucial and I know that they are aware of what our problems are. And these issues of distribution is not an African thing. It is a thing of independent producers. I bet there are producers in America that have the same issues that we are talking about. You know. But it all comes down to being able to control or command the help that we need. You know, because we need it. They don't, you know. And so if we don't come together to give some relevance to our content enough to make them not be able to reject it, we'd still be at the same place. You know, we have to let them feel that because like, you know, like, like um, um, can you mention it, it's Netflix now wants to enter Africa. They want to penetrate the African market. You know, how are they going to do that? They're going to use individual producers, you know, so soon Netflix will be detecting what figures to us and producers who just can't wait to have their, their, their content on Netflix could destroy the business for us all. So for an example, 
if Netflix comes and calls KBG and offers KBG $200 to put their films on Netflix, KBG says, oh, God, I'm so excited. Even if you don't pay me, I'm okay. And then KBG <laughs> takes the money. You know, okay. Netflix goes to point and says, I'm going to put your film on Netflix. Oh, you're so excited. And they give you $200. They come to Darlington. Darlington says, no, I will not accept that. Darlington becomes the bad one. Then they'll come to Kofi Asamoa, also in Nigeria, and I'll accept it. So now they will use me against people like Darlington. They'll use me, they'll use us against ourselves if we don't come together. But when we are together, and he said, no, $200, I won't take it. I want $5,000, I want $25,000. United Queen says $25,000. Darlington says $25,000. They will have no choice. They will know the value of the African filmmaker. They will be able to control the market. They will be able to control the price. That is what actors groups in America, in Hollywood are doing. That is what the different, even crew organizations are doing. They are coming together so they can control their work. They can control their value, you know. So for me, I, I, I always say that we are the problem we need to change. We, individually, you know, we in, as individuals. If we are, I'm sorry, a call was trying to uh, come through. If we're able to come together, can you hear me, everybody? Yeah. 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 If we're able to come together, you know, as a people, as an industry, you know, and make very collective efforts in putting all our content at one hand. We'll control prices. So if we will probably never need any external you know, portal, external distributor. There will be distributors who will know our work within us. I'm sure there are people who have enough money to set up distribution companies. But the interest is not there because we haven't given them the need to. We haven't given them reason to have or show such expressions of interest. But when we give them reason, they know that we have the numbers, that people listen to us, that people want to see us, that people want to watch us. I'm sure, you know, we would be able to, you know, make heads way in this battle. Uh, ever moving, say, ever moving forward media. Netflix is already in Africa, and they actually have good budgets. Sure, there is, there is exactly. need to be together because the power will be in the hands of the African content producers. I would like to we take have to the put next the question. power in our own hands. And that's exactly what I'm saying, you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> if we don't, believe you me, the arrival of Netflix will just be of no use. Like, we will not have the benefit of you know, people, the institutions like Netflix. Because we would rather be so excited about having our content there than making money out of there. There are two different things. Today, it looks to me like Netflix has become like an ultimate measure of a young filmmaker's success. Oh, he has a film on Netflix. Oh, he's, you know, that's what it's becoming. So it is easy for you to forget that it is a money-making avid. It is a, a revenue source, you know. Unfortunately, um, we have um, two films on Netflix, um, KTK and um, um, Saichigan. But if I look at how much, and I compare to how much I know a colleague in Nigeria is making, I ask myself, why? Is it because I'm from Ghana? Like, you know, these Nigerians are able to, 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 to control their market, even if it is just a group of a small number of them. You know, they're able to control their market. They're able to say no. But how about the rest? Can we also say no? You know, so it, it, it's, it's just, you know, and it's not just Netflix. There are other portals as well, you know, Kana Plus, etc. Sometimes, you know, dealing with them, I, 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 I'm I always looking at the other producers, you know. Can they be able to say no? Because if they come to me and I say, no, this figure is so small or so big, they, they would go to somebody else. And when that is accepted, it is easy for that to become the norm. So we will lose control. We will absolutely lose control. You know. So we really need to come together to be able to fight, fight the battle. Uh, Darlington, 
you have quite a few movies Netflix. I know they have paid some of my fellow um, stand-up comedians from America. Money is up to sixty million dollars, sometimes even more. Do you think what they are paying African producers is fair? I don't know. I know how much you got paid. I'll ask privately so that you can bless me. But do you think the deal is fair for African producers? Okay. Um, I would I would answer that in, in two ways. Um, one, I want to subscribe to some of the things Kofi has said about um, coming together and putting value on our work. You know, um, there are a lot of people who, because they just want their content on Netflix, would underprice. And when they have done that, um, by the time somebody else is actually putting value on his work, the question would then be, but your colleague sold us his film for for so and so an amount, you know, so why are you being hard headed? So I think um, everyone who actually goes into a project and makes a good film should be ready to tell any platform um, the right value. If, it, if they are not going to buy, you should be proud enough to say, I won't sell and either take it somewhere else, because if the principle is not there, if you just, okay, let me give you the first one at a cheap rate, they won't, they won't increase the price tomorrow. They will still come for, tomorrow they'll still come for the same cheap rates. They will, the price won't go up. So it's better to just put your foot down at the beginning. Um, that being said, I will not also um, totally disagree with Netflix if they are maybe commissioning an, an original series for a different amount that they are doing same in Hollywood. Reason being that we are not spending the same. Um, if a production of a film, because I've heard them say um, a feature film, maybe a Hollywood feature film for Netflix, they spent about a hundred million or 50 million or whatever million dollars to cut, to produce an, an original, um, 10 million, 20 million, 40 million. Um, I think the, the price placed on the Irish man was very high, but I think they actually wanted to go to cinema, but they, they, they didn't make it anymore. But if you're not coming to Nigeria, what I would say for buying a Nollywood film or an African film or licensing an African film or commissioning an original is put the right value. I wouldn't say if you pay a Hollywood film $1 million, then you must pay a Nigerian film $1 million. No. Because we are not, we are not actually going to be spending the same. So it, it's not the same. Um, there are films where I, I recently heard or I read the the figure that Iron Man Robert Downing Jr. got as his royalty for um, Marvel Endgame. It was about 50, 60, 75 million dollars or something. Now, I will, that is, I, that's not the kind of money I would pay in Nigeria now. I'm not spending that here. You know, I, I said when I was talking earlier that the fees of some Hollywood actors may be my production budget because this is my market. I have about 50 something cinemas in Nigeria. So I won't be spending millions of dollars to produce a film when I know what my cinema strengths can give back to me. So if I'm spending here and I know what I am going to be putting in place to make this film work, what just needs to happen is as they approach every industry, 
whatever price you are putting on the content for that industry has to be fair to that industry. You know, um, there is a saying in the Bible that somebody goes to the markets to buy something, and when when is haggling with the when the buyer is haggling with the seller, he says it's very expensive. And I haven't bought the thing and it's turning away. He says, Ah, I got a very good bargain. Now, no matter the price anybody tells us, you still want to say, you still want to, you still want to haggle. So even if the person comes with a good price, for example, you go and meet Kofi for his movie, or you are meeting meeting um, Zamo for her film, and you are giving her a fair price, which she knows is a fair price. So maybe as she entered into the negotiating room, she was prepared to ask for a hundred thousand rand, for example. That is what she wanted. That is her value. Now she enters into the negotiating room and you say your first price that you give her is 120,000 rand as your opening bid. Automatically, 100,000 rand is no longer enough. She then says, no, it's too small. What about 150 or 200? Now, you know, so at such times, I have had one or two producers in Nigeria price themselves out of the market. Because these people who are also approaching you, even though they are trying to get the best deal, they also know what your production rates are, what your production budgets are. They've done their research on the country. They want to penetrate, penetrate the country. They want to make originals here. So they have done their homework. So while we are trying to get them not to cheat us, we, we also should not, because even if probably they give you, you ask them for the same $10 million that they give to someone in Hollywood to make a film. You may not have the requisite manpower or equipment to make your film the same way they would make the film over there. And, in, and if you don't want to bring the same manpower and resources from there to Nigeria or to South Africa or to Ghana to make the film that way, you would end up spending more than $10 million because you are going to factor in items that they did not have to factor in over there. You are factoring in travel, they are factoring in logistics. So those are things that they did not factor in over there. So that is, it just makes it again proper that in trying to tell a film, in trying to tell a story, tell your story integral to you, but for an international audience. When the story is sweet, when the story is proper, when the story, when you are telling that story well, it will be enjoyed. And as they continue to enjoy your film, and by the time they put the, the film eventually on the platform, and a lot of people are watching it, not just Nigerians or South Africans, but it's cutting across everybody. The algorithm gives rise to this particular producer or country that, okay, there is something here. This person has something. Now they are coming back to you then they would increase it as in because you have you, you you've made yourself invaluable it's like a netflix going back to the producers of money heist because of the international appeal of that title right now they will be talking to them with respect because they know that this is content that the world wants to watch so they will talk to them properly but if it was if it was the very first season and the person also wasn't really to bend at all or it was just was trying to say, okay, but you paid somebody who did a series in Hollywood, X, Y, Z. Why are you paying me this? But I, and Netflix knows that, okay, even if I'm paying this person X, Y, Z, I know how much actors collect in America. I know how much actors collect in Spain. They don't collect the same. So, it, you know, it, it just has to be fair as to region. So while we, we, we do not want to be cheated, we also should be fair in our conversations. But the key thing is, whatever we're getting, it has to be that the stories are original to us, they're told with such an appeal, because once it is sweet internationally, and you have placed yourself in their throat, they won't want to let you go. They will come to you again and again and again, because they have seen that, okay, this person strikes gold. Those are my thoughts. Coin, 
Anything to add, please? Yeah, well, um, what about more like the United States of Africa? Because I, I feel like if we, we have lots of stories to tell, first of all, um, just like everybody else has said, even just in Zambia. Um, I mean, growing up, my grandma, grandpa told me so many stories, um, some of which I've written, I'm hoping to do movies for, you know, even just basic history in Southern Africa, Africa at large. I feel like we have lots of stories. Now imagine a situation where if if we partnered more with more local uh, with more African producers, we had a structure. Because I mean, I'm not sure with the exact statistic. I think 1.2 billion people in Africa, give or take. If we had a very good structure of um, cinemas and distributing the, the movies and the stories that we tell, at least um, out of that 1.2 billion, if at least 300 million or arguments like 100 million got to watch my movie because we had a good structure, you know, because Darlington is able to distribute my movies in Nigeria. Zamo is able to do the same in South Africa, KB, everybody else in Ghana, because we just came together and we have this set structure around the continent. We tell our stories and we're literally keeping the money in the network because we're working with our, our promoters right here in Africa, um, cinemas right here in Africa. In the end, I think I think it will be a better place for everybody. It's a win-win situation for everybody. Hi, can you get me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. KBG. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I think I think um, I I I I agree with uh, what Darlington said and also what um, um, Cohen said that at the end of the day we. we it boils down to what we are going to like do now moving forward. Because I feel like this is the right time to like uh, um, um, work together. Right now, people are consuming a lot of data. You know, um, like in Malawi, what's happening right now in Malawi is a lot of media houses um, that were just depending on um, broadcasting on TVs, like cable TV, they're struggling right now because they did not prepare for such a thing. You know, this coronavirus thing has just killed, like people are like, churches are like down, you know? So um, this is when people are like now noticing that, you know, at the end of the day, we need these people who are doing content. Um, Because at the the end of the day, we should not run away from the fact that a lot of people think what we do is just entertainment. So they don't want to give us uh, that attention or they don't want to pay us the same. You know, when you come up in a room and you say, "I'm I'm a content creator, and then someone comes in and says, I'm a doctor. The, the respect there is different. You know, they'll look at the doctor with much respect than you. They don't know that this doctor, when, when they want to go to a wedding, uh, when they want to chill at home and watch some entertainment, they'll, they'll be watching your content that you spent hours and days and even years like producing, you know. So um, first of all, we have to change the narrative and really do a lot of these um, um uh, like online uh, content, just explaining to people like the process, uh, what what it means to be a producer. Because a lot of Africans don't really understand. That's why maybe it's hard for them to pay us or to pay uh, for for the content that they're getting. Um, and then it still comes back to the point of saying that we need to come to a, a place where we like uh, come together and um, uh, do stuff together. And even when we are creating our content. Um, if we can find references uh, on some of the things that we are producing, um, we, it might help uh, to some extent because um, people don't really have an idea. I've, I've, I've discovered that a lot of people don't really have an idea of what it means to be who we are. So um, the other point I wanted to ask, I think, um, uh, a question to you guys, just because um, we are, I think we're operating on di- different levels. Uh, when it comes to production um, in, in our countries. Like here in Malawi, the movie scene is non-existent. Um, I just wanted to like um, give a shout out to just a few guys who are shooting a movie right now. They started, I think, last week. And these are like producers from all over Malawi. So they sat down and said, guys, we've got stuff. We've got gear. We've got equipment. Uh, but we've been doing solo projects and they're not going anywhere. How, why can we... Can we just like come together and, and do like one production? And trust me, they did a, 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 what you call, a trailer 
and it made a lot of buzz because these guys like they put in a lot of effort in it like there are a couple of producers who did that so i feel like that's a, a case study um and uh, when I, I met these guys i told them the same thing that i think if we continue like working like this things can change because we, we're going to produce something that will catch people's attention other than just coming with my own camera one camera uh yeah. that is not shooting in 8k and i'm coming there and i'm producing work content but if we come together we'll actually create something that is of substance so yeah shout out to the guys for making yeah, yeah changing the movie industry in malawi but i'm worried about their social distancing and they're supposed to be on lockdown yeah that's what i'm saying i think we're operating on different levels guys different levels <laughs> you know, even this right now um how malawi is working right now is uh, we're in difficult times coronavirus has hit us but i feel like uh, the politicians are not ready to take that in yet because there's an election that's coming so they're still doing the lorries and stuff and we have uh churches that still it's a crazy it's a crazy time for us but we're trying to like cope so yeah anything to add zamo um I me mean, now say yeah, I, I agree with everyone in terms of uh, like let's work together let's see what we can do together to make this thing grow appreciates coin for like allowing us to work with him coin coin we came to to to, to zamba spoke to coin and coin said guys let's shoot something i have equipment i have everything come let's shoot something appreciate uh, uh, darlington for putting us under your wing i know anytime i want to come and shoot in in nigeria like i think it's overdue i've been saying i'm coming forever i know but yeah i i, I appreciate the fact we we, we we individually as uh, producers are already like working with other producers in in different parts of africa you know so so i think let's keep up let's see how, what we can all do together like uh, like like support each other collaborate together and uh, until such time this baby that we're trying to make is like global kind of african producers working together you know see the lights but but really i appreciate and uh, let's work together in terms of making sure that we we make it happen our audience is also we will need to have a topic on how we can educate our audience because we need that i remember when uh, we did uh, 10 days in sun city which is on netflix please go and watch it on netflix and come back and thank me later when the posters were out in south africa people would come because we'd go to the cinemas and people We'll be like oh i want to watch this movie and then when they realize it's not american because it looked the posters look so beautiful the people on the poster are beautiful they're like oh i thought it was american like it's like they get a disappointment and then they, they want to watch something else so we we need to go into our mentality especially in south africa because this does not happen in other countries other countries will support their own but let us move on before i start sweating mr darlington this one is especially for you. You've, you. you've done many successful projects. Quite a few of them are on Netflix. Uh, all your cinema releases are always big. But you still produce for YouTube. You have a series uh, on AYTV on uh, YouTube. Please do check it out. It's called Call to Bar. It's a web series. It's a very, very funny sitcom that features a lot of funny Nigerian comedians. It's it's well written. It's well shot. Like it's it was shot for TV. Why are you still doing YouTube? And what advice can you give us and our audiences about YouTube and how they can support producers who produce for YouTube? Please unmute your mic. Thank you. Thank you. The, the, the market is wide, wider than, than, the cine, than the cinema. You know, you have different audiences. There are people who, who want the cinema experience. There are those who only want to watch films at home. And then there are also those who want bite-sized content on their phones, on the go. Um, you have to be able to reach each and every one of these people. But the key thing in trying to reach each and every one of these people is 
um, even when you reduce your budget for the different markets, still make sure that the quality of your of your content for that market will stand you out. Um, when we decided to do call to bar, it was okay. The only thing that would differentiate this particular content from TV is going to be the length. The only thing is not that it's bite size, but what we are making is something that if a TV platform calls me today, I don't need to add anything technically for us to give it to them to say this is what you need. And so I think it just needs to be going the extra mile to put something in your content. Don't 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 think okay because it's going to YouTube, I, I should not pay attention to the quality of the content. Because um, I, I, I remember, okay, not just because Zamo mentioned it now, but I remember a few years ago when Zamo and yourself, Tenjo, was talking about a particular content you had on YouTube that had been seen and you wanted to now increase the length and take it to TV. Now, if what you produced for YouTube at the time was wishy-washy, if it was nonsense, Nobody would come and say, I think it can come on TV, or I, I, I want to commission you to make it, you know, increase the length and bring it on TV. It was because what you did was good. That is why the platform came and said, bring it onto, you know, TV. So we just need to put the extra effort to be proud of our work, just to ensure that when it is seen anywhere anybody sees your work, because it's, it's basically your CV that is always speaking for you. People watch it and, oh, who, who produced this? People watch and say, who directed this? And people are looking, but then they can also watch it and say, ah, who produced this? And never want to speak with you again because of what you have put there, because maybe you produced it and said, okay, it's YouTube. Anyhow, anyhow, let it just be like that. So same thing we do for... Our, our cinema films, our TV films, because I also do some films for, for TV. We just always want to ensure that the quality of the content, wherever it is, as long as our name is tied to it, within that space, it has to stand out. Within that space, it has to, it has, even if I'm using a million Naira to produce it, it has to look to your face as if I used five million Naira. I have to look for what can I put in this thing that will make it stand out to the consumer. Because at the end of the day, if my customers, if my consumers on any platform, for cinema is the cinema go out, for TV, those that watch TV, for YouTube, those that come on the platform, for Facebook, those that go, if they do not like the content, then I, I have killed my own market in that particular platform. So I have to make it such that where, where, whatever type of soup I'm cooking, the ingredients has to be enough. If I'm cooking a big pot, then it has to be. I won't just add water to make it a big pot. No, I will put the appropriate ingredients to ensure that whoever is tasting from this big pot will still enjoy it. If I'm cooking a small pot, you know, the ingredients has to be enough for whatever uh, market I am selling the content to. And that is what I think across Africa, filmmakers need to employ as they make films. If you are making a film in Malawi or Zambia or South Africa or Ghana, for example, one of the first things you need to forget about is the budget of the film. People come and meet me and they say, how much would it cost to make a film? And I said, the story determines. If you have not done a story, you do not know what the story is about and you are talking about the cost. No. If the story has to be good enough, first of all, it is the story that will make you know, okay, now I have the story. What do I need to properly execute this story? So now if the person starts with the, the money part of it and says, I want to make a 5 million naira film. First of all, in his mind, all he's about is I want a film that will not cross 5 million naira. So everything is being chipped for that. The story is no longer important in this regard. It's the 5 million naira that is important. Not to cross 5 million naira is what is important. But when the person comes and says, I want to tell a story about, now he's starting from the right perspective. I want to tell a story about so and so and so and so and so. Now the script has been written. What is the budget for it? Okay, 
I don't have ABC amount. Now, how do we then as producers, because that is what producers do. You have given me a script, you have given me a budget. How do I marry the two of them together to bring out the best possible interpretation of this script based on the available budget? How do I do that? That's what producers do. But if you start from far right, which is the money thing, then you have you're already losing it. So it's just the you're just, it's, it's just the framework. There is no meat in the box. When the people then open the box, then there is nothing. And also, lastly, let me use Ni Nigeria. Um, previously, the same way you say South Africans may not want to watch, uh, you know, content. We were very disappointed during the ten days in Sun City era because when they didn't see it. But initially, it, it was the case here because we're making our content and some people weren't really thinking about the audience. So you would see somebody say, go to the cinema, see a Nigerian poster, see a, South, um, a Hollywood poster and go into the cinema hall for the Hollywood title. But then we looked at it and said, okay, we can make this kind of films. I don't need to go and carry a helicopter and fly about and fall into the water and scatter everything and blow up 800 cars to make an interesting film. We can tell a good story. And we started telling good stories. And as each good story came out, it started to convert the mindset of Nigerians to watching Nollywood films. So the reason why they watch Nollywood films currently is because they have seen films that... Nigerian films that they saw, that they enjoyed, and then, okay, because they've seen this one, they are automatically tied to, okay, who produced this film? The person is coming out again, they would go and watch the person's film. And so it has given them an interest in Nollywood titles. There are still some Nollywood films that are in the cinemas or that have entered the cinemas that probably ought not to have gone to the cinemas and that people have seen and also complained about. But... I give it to our distributors and our exhibitors, especially um, Film One distribution and um, Silver Bay distribution over the years. They have tried to be a proper gateway. So when they see a film based on their own knowledge of the industry, they look at it as, ah, it won't work like this. Or they, they give you advice, okay, go and re-edit it, cut it like, they, they, they tell you, so you, if you are a sensible producer and your distributor is advising you that, okay, if you edit this film like this, this is how, based on our own knowledge of the industry, it would work. We take it back, we call, but when you don't want to be sensible and you are stubborn, and then by the time you put the film in the cinema and people watch it and begin to cry and start, after the first week, they don't want to see your film again, then you have lost money. You know, so it is in doing a story, doing a film, that will interest your audience that would because no matter how your how big your marketing budget is what we know is your marketing budget only works for the first two weeks especially in nigeria it gets people to come to the cinemas the first week and maybe the second week but after that it is the word of mouth so even if after the second week you are still spending millions of naira dollars whatever on marketing once somebody comes out of a cinema hall in nigeria and says that film is not sweet End of story. The, anybody within that person's space will not go and see that film. Anybody with, that he knows will not go and see that film. All he has to say is that film is not sweet. Even if the person was already wanting to buy the ticket, as he hears that film is not sweet, he takes his money back and buys something else. And that, that film is not sweet continues. And at, at the end of the day, even if you are spending a lot of money on publicity, the word of mouth has cancelled the film. So if the content is good and you have done your proper marketing, and people have gone inside the cinema the first time and they've come out to say, ah, that is a good film. For example, there are about two Nollywood films that are going on Netflix within the next few, a week or two. One of them is The Delivery Boy. Another one is um, Living in Bondage. And people who saw the film in the cinema are already excited and telling people, ah, I saw it in the cinema. It's very nice. Now they, have, they are creating anticipation. It's, and this is free publicity. It's not being paid for. It's because they enjoyed the film in the cinema. Now they are hearing it's going on Netflix. They already come out and say, ah, I enjoyed it then. You guys should go and watch it. Now those within their space, and this is the age of social media, where everybody comes on the phone. People, Somebody has gone on Instagram and you know, post. His friends in London, his friends everywhere, 
they are all going to go and see the film. Now, it is possible that that film is not also good. And when they watch it in the cinema, they did not like it. Same way they will go on social media and say, this is a useless film. I did not enjoy it in the cinema. That way, nobody will still want to watch it. And now, you as a producer, you have spoiled your name for Netflix. Because they know that, okay, this person does bad film. No, people, before, because of him, people don't want to watch films on our platform anymore. They won't come and meet you tomorrow. So it just ensures that as for every content you make, everything you stamp your name on, ensure that it is good. Ensure that you are proud of it. So because it will speak for you. It's your CV even anywhere you are not. Thank you. mic my mic was off sorry uh with youtube we have seen young kids from america and other western countries making millions and, and some have been born out of youtube and uh but african audiences we're still struggling to get people to come and watch on youtube we're struggling to get people to come and subscribe in south africa they associate subscription with something you have to pay for and I think that's because we live on credit. Even the clothes we wear are on credit. The milk we buy, we buy it with a credit card. So anything that says subscribe, we're thinking, ah, what's, what, what's the catch? How much do I have to pay every month and all that? So KPG, how is the YouTube in your country? Hey, guys, it's like coronavirus. People are scared to, to subscribe. I don't, I don't know. I, honestly, guys, I don't understand why people don't want to subscribe um, um, in Malawi. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, um, so you get to like, I feel like most, a lot of content gets a lot of views on Facebook better than uh, YouTube. And then I think we have Facebook as the first and then Instagram and then Twitter and then you have um, YouTube. So because of that, it's been forcing people to like just do content and just post it on Facebook. Um, and, and, and I think uh, like service providers are not even helping us because what they've done, uh, like uh, our service providers, we've got Airtel. Um, Airtel, I think, is also in uh, your countries. Airtel, um, the, the phone network, and uh, MT and Telecom, Malawi Telecom, um, TNM, yeah, TNM, uh, sorry. So these guys, what they've done, they've, they introduced bundles for Facebook, Twitter and uh, Instagram. There's no YouTube. So what happens is when you create something, uh, content, music, video, and then you post it on, on YouTube and then you send it on WhatsApp, people, the first thing that someone will say is, bruh, can you just send me the song? Can you just send me the video on WhatsApp? You know? so. If you're not going to send them, there'll be one smart guy who's going to go on your YouTube page, download that thing, and share it on WhatsApp. And then your thing is viral, but you've got two views on, on your YouTube, um, um, one subscriber. And so what, what that is doing is you, it's just forcing a lot of people like content creators to push their stuff, their content on, on Facebook. Um, and, 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 and somehow I feel like uh, when people are coming to like check on our content, they don't take us serious because they are not looking on Facebook. They 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 go on YouTube um, uh, to see if, if your content is there. Uh, but then when they go on YouTube, they see that you don't have views, but you are famous. So somehow it doesn't add up. These people are confused. Uh, they don't know whether you're saying the truth or not. So we have to like come to a point or a place where we'll be able to like. Um, have conversation, a lot of conversation with people that are consuming our data to understand that they need to like be subscribing, um, um, also uh, watching the stuff on YouTube, or else we have to like make meetings and conferences, or maybe like just webinars like these ones with our service providers to provide bundles that people can afford. Because internet is also uh, uh, a factor in this whole thing. People don't want to like spend a lot of bundles watching um, um, stuff on YouTube. That's why they will run to like WhatsApp and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's the struggle that we, we are having right now in Malawi. And you see that there are a lot of famous people um, that are famous um, only on Facebook,
but they don't have their content on, on, on YouTube. I don't know how, how you guys are uh, um, handling this problem, but it's, it's, it's worse here. And the other thing is our, our system, like uh, the copyright system is not working to, to its full capacity. Um, so even for them, it's hard to track uh, your views or everything. You, you don't get paid from your views um, from, from, from YouTube and, and all that kind of stuff. The best thing that you can do is do a show, um, premiere your, your movie, and have people come and pay uh, on the door. Otherwise, when that thing goes out, that's it. You, you're, you, you've you lost your money. It's like you're doing it for charity now. So you just have to be like going in the streets and saying, you know, I, I do this for the passion of it, whether I'm gonna get money or not, that's, that's, that's the thing. But otherwise, it's, it's hard out here. I don't know. Um, I, I would love to hear how you guys are, uh, are managing with that kind of situation. Well, um, Tenji, Tenji, your mic is muted. See, that's why you need a crew. Uh, coin. <laughs> <laughs> How is how is it in, in Zambia when it comes to uh, monetizing and uh, pub, uh, producing stuff for other platforms like YouTube and other social media platforms? What works and how can people support you? Well, um, YouTube works. Um, I, I think the, the biggest challenge is most producers need to be educated on how to um, get their, 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 their products out there. You know, um, you, you, speaking from experience, I've, I've produced content for a few platforms and you meet this individual who's asking you if you work for that particular platform because your content is on, on, on that platform. And you look at what they have and you, this, this is amazing, you know. But that individual, because um, like I mentioned, we don't really have film schools. And so it's difficult for most people with content to know how to take it to YouTube, how to take it to, to whichever platform they want to take it. Um, a few people who are privileged to know the process flow on how to get your content out there. They're, they're monetizing it. Um, I know a few people around, around the world, actually, um, who are Zambian. They, they come down here, they shoot content. Um, they, they're out there, they're living in the diaspora. And a few of them are, are then educating a few others down here on how to say, okay, if, if you shoot your content, you can, you can be able to put it on YouTube and make money like this. You know, I, I just learned about it recently. This year, in 2020, is when I actually understood the whole mechanism on how I can make money. KBG, I know you're going to call me after this. So it's, 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 I think it's something that we, <laughs> I think it's something where we need to start sharing more knowledge, you know. Um, Mine, last year, I shared with you, didn't I? I even got those guys for you. You just didn't believe it. It didn't make sense to me. <laughs> You did that in Malawi. No, you did. You know, you know. Let me tell you. Let me tell you the funny thing is, right now, if I go on my YouTube yep. page and I try to sign up, like for like the monetizing thing to start um, rolling to like to get paid for my content, it will tell me that this service yeah. is not available in your country. That's how bad it is. Because we so don't with, have with a, with a, with a situation like that, KB. You're able to partner with Atenjiwe or Darlington and say, hey, Darlington, my guy, I've got this. We can make money like this. And then you focus on marketing that content in Malawi, in Southern Africa. You know that, oh, I can send it to Tenjiwe. I can send the link to Coin, Tenjiwe, and a few other people. And the next, it's, 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 it's basically going round and round and round. You know, it's, so it's knowledge like that that I've just shared with you. Like, yo, KB, get in touch with Darlington. See if you can find a way and how you can monetize that on YouTube if that service is not there in Malawi, you know, it's, it's, it's like, um, on the musical side of stuff that, that I do. And with, with my guys, we've, we've, there's, they've been on iTunes and all these other places, musical platforms for a while, but it's only now that these guys are coming to Zambia and everybody's getting excited. Oh, iTunes is coming to Zambia. You can put your music there, blah, blah, blah. But before this, you monetized it by working with other people who are out there, who are doing it and they're sharing knowledge. 
you know, and in the end, it's it's a win-win situation where all, all, all um, more people are being educated and saying, listen, yes, you have a good story. The way you can get it out there, you can do like this and like this. Because even just a mere proposal to a TV station, I think I can count very few people who can actually find a way to put a proposal together for a very good reality or drama series and pitch it in. Because that's a corporate world you're pitching it. You have to send an email, my guy. You send it. It goes, but very few people have that knowledge on how to put together just a basic proposal for a TV show. So I think if if more knowledge is shared amongst us and to other people, we have more workshops, webinars. We 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 just out there to educate more people, and we also get educated. You know, I mean, like clearly Darlington, he's 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 like a dinosaur in the industry to me right now. So I'm I'm learning a lot. You know. So it's, <laughs> so it's, it's, I think it's just sharing more knowledge and getting uh, filmmakers, African filmmakers to know the process flow on how to get um, stuff out there. And they, they should also get serious to learn. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube and stuff you can read on the internet. That's going to help you to learn and say, okay, if I've got this feature film, I want to get it out there. I can do this and this and this and this. And then in the end, we'll find a way to monetize it. Uh, Zamo, anything to add to that? I think they've said it all, yeah. They've said it all in terms of monetizing things on YouTube. You are, we have a problem. People still think, people that you really think they are smart and you, they'll know these things, they'll think you pay to, to subscribe on YouTube. They think it's you, you have to they, they deduct every month or something for you to, to subscribe on YouTube. So I think we need to, to educate people a lot. We need to have some, whether it's webinars or some workshops of making people understand that you don't have to pay a cent on YouTube to, 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 to subscribe on YouTube, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so guys, please do subscribe to us. Yeah. Uh, you keep talking. Yeah. So let me add yes. something on this YouTube thing. Um, one of the tricks that I know um, Nigerian content developers have employed is to create, when they create a content for their YouTube channel, they put um, 60 seconds of it, or at times even less than that, on Instagram or Facebook. So they put very little of it on that platform and put the full content on YouTube. So now they have captured your interest with that 60 seconds and they tell you to so watch the full video and uh, go to my YouTube channel. So something happens there. Even if the person doesn't subscribe, but the person will go there and view, and the views also count in terms of monetization. So you may not get the person as a subscriber, but you would get him as a viewer. Yeah. So from you, you understand that you're always always redirecting him to YouTube. You may end up becoming a subscriber. Yes, we can. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. So that is what I. Yeah, mean. I, I, I went off for a bit. Went off for a bit. No, that's fine. That's can fine. We hear you? Can, can we all hear you? We can hear you. So that is what I think should be something that content producers where we also employ. In pushing people to YouTube, you create that muscle, that muscle, that video. I have an echo coming back to me. I don't know what it Okay, so create that short video. Put it on Facebook. And tell people to watch the full content and go to my YouTube channel. And as long as the content is enjoyable, they will go. Um, well, a thing an American did some years ago, uh, it was uh, that his girlfriend went out and then she came back and caught him in bed with an it was like a sing song kind to some blacks came back, caught him with another girl, and then his friend, and then there was a killer. It was a long story happening across, you know, and there was a killer, and then the girlfriend, there was a Spanish, you know, there was everything inside it. And what they were doing was they would put about almost 60 seconds on Instagram. 
and then redirect you to their YouTube channel to go and watch the full, I think, three minute or so video. And people were going there and they got a lot of views from that. From that, they almost did it, they did it for almost, well, I think it was almost 20 episodes of it or so. But that way they got, and because I think at the time they did it, even the um, IG video, Instagram, the video part hadn't come up then. So they, they did, there was even no space to put long videos on Instagram. So they could only put the 60 seconds. So I think if you have good content, and that is what, if you check a lot of Nigerian who are making content for YouTube, what they do, go to their Instagram page, go to their Facebook page, they'll put a short version of it there and then redirect you to watch the full this thing, click, they'll put a link on their bio, click the link on my bio and stuff and you go there. So that is a trick you can also employ, make your content, give us something to watch on Instagram that would drag me to want to finish it and for that reason I would go to your channel. So even if I did not subscribe the first week, the second week, but I will my views would count for you and because that's one of the ways you would also get, you know, your revenue from from the YouTube algorithms that pay people. So that yes. was what I wanted to add. Sorry, talented. Yeah, were you done? Yeah, 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 I'm done. Okay, thank you. So we need to employ marketing strategies even for platforms like YouTube. We cannot ignore it. The same efforts we put when we are doing films and we are doing TV projects. We have to do like TV projects. Coca-Cola still advertises. Why are we not advertising? This is what I'm getting. So we need to push. People are not just going to uh, dream that KPG has put something on YouTube. Let me go. So it's very important that we still continue. I know you guys are storytellers. So we could sit here for seven hours. And I only asked for one of your hours. So we have to wrap things up. But let's just read this uh, last comment. 90% of YouTubers I follow are Nigerians, 80% Ghana, 60% Kenya, and other African countries, and 100% Europe, etc. It has helped me now understand different cultures. I, I know I do not understand maths, but how, does, how do you follow 90%? 80%? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it's okay. COVID, COVID maths. It's not for normal times. It's a Corona maths. So you just yeah, need. I know. No, 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 no. <laughs> from his two hundred percent. So just leave him alone. Mm. Oh, yeah. No, what? His maths didn't wear the proper Corona virus mask. It wore this mask. <laughs> So guys, we are all African and we want to collaborate, we want to tell the same stories. But I've got questions to ask you just to prove that we can relate to each other, we can relate to each other's culture and country. Uh, I'm going to unmute all the mics and hope that it works and that it doesn't give us the echo. I'm going to ask you questions and if as an African you can relate, please un unmute your mics. You tell me. You know you're African when going to a university is not optional. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> you know you're African when your parents tell I you... I teaching. I'm a teacher. Because they're living, but they talk to people for <laughs> another 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, Africa. Yeah. You know, yeah. Africa, when you ask your parents for a ride to school and they tell you they used to walk five miles uphill to school and five miles uphill back. So you can walk to Sorry, I didn't get that. Read it again. I didn't get that. Read it again. You know, you're African when you ask your parents for a ride to school and they tell you they used to walk five miles uphill to school and five miles uphill to school. So you can walk. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're African when if you're traveling, half the things you expect to travel are not for you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You know, that is so true. Let me tell you a story. 
Um, I'm not down in Canada right now. I can't travel because borders are closed. So before... I, I hope my father is not watching, but I relate. Before <laughs> so the lockdown happened, uh, I was supposed to leave like a few days or before it happened. So if you can see my suitcase, it is like one of my biggest suitcase is full. And I promise you one thing, none, none, none of the things in the suitcase is mine. Nothing. Nothing. That's how but I'm doing But the suitcase is yours. The suitcase is mine, but nothing is mine. You know you're African when instead of hiring a caterer, everyone invited to the party brings a dish. Straight up facts. And that will never change. Bring and say. Yeah. That is, that is the fair game. Bring and say. <laughs> You know you're African. Yeah. It's of course to show up to someone's house without notice. <laughs> to be fair. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When we were my father, my father was coming back. You know you're African when the party starts at four and you arrive at eleven and it's perfectly okay. <laughs> Is it 11 before or 11 after? <laughs> 11 after, 11 p.m. The, the party is at 4 p.m. You, you are at 11 p.m. I didn't know that. Wow. Who knows? You know, you know you're African when your parents don't <laughs> you get in the car because they're leaving, but they talk to people for another 30 minutes. Yeah, how is that this for the kids? Yeah. 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 So, right. we, so, we are Africans, we can relate. You mean, you mean, you grew up with five? Yeah. You know I'm saying, we are Africans, we can relate, we can tell the same stories. Yeah. We can work together in telling our story. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Any last words in conclusion? Listen. Uh, I think, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me go first because uh, yeah, I, I think I need to. Um, I'm with my. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm I'm parenting. I'm 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 parent. I'm not babysitting. I'm parenting my kids, so I need to run. But um, basically, my my point is, we we need a set structure in Africa. For we just need to work together and form a set structure you know where it's we're just all united i know if dullington's working on a movie i know he's working on a movie i know it's we have him for his movie to reach my audience my people down here in southern africa i know it's the same if i'm going to go to kenya if if if, if i'm in south africa you yeah, think we just need a set structure where we just flow the movie's done with the, the market um, uh, uh, is in place in the structure. The cinemas is in place. If it's a premiere, imagine the way we get world premieres for bad boys. I think we can do the same for Africa. At this stage, I'm not even looking or talking about saying, let's go worldwide. I'm talking about Africa-wide. You know, if KBG does a movie, how's about a proper structure where in Sudan, in Nigeria, in Guinea, in, in Kenya, in Mali, in Zambia, you can feel the buzz, the hype is there, the same way we get the hype when we know Hollywood's dropping a movie, there's a big, big vibe around the world because th th there's a set structure worldwide, you know, and that's how come I feel, my personal opinion, you find a Hollywood movie is going to do better than in certain countries because they have a set structure so well that it penetrates even your own system in your own country. You know, whilst we don't have any set for ourselves, um, just as a continent, well, as a country, few countries are doing it, you know. So I, I think we need that set structure. And that's my little hashtag of the United States of Africa. So, so yeah, that's my view. <laughs> and I got to go now, guys. It's been amazing. Let's do this again and again and again. I love you guys. And guys, thanks Thank for watching. So Tune in again and subscribe to Tenji's page. Please, it's free. It's free. If anything, it's free thousand free hundred free. Please subscribe. <laughs> Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. And I've got the links uh, for everyone that we had on the panel today. Uh, the links are in the description. You will find the links to all their social media and YouTube channels. Please do subscribe. And you can subscribe to as many pages, as many channels as you like. 
last word, KBG. Well, um, you guys should come to Malawi and do some stuff. I think we've got some beautiful scenery here, um, beautiful actors. So if you guys uh, want to explore Africa, put Malawi on your on your playlist. And yeah, I'll feed you some chambo. <laughs> I'm definitely coming. I'm definitely okay. coming. Zamo? Uh, I'm saying, uh, well, um, this was a very, very great platform for, for, for all of us as producers to get to talk to each other, share the, the experiences that we have and um, the future solutions that we may have in, you know, in terms of making films. I'm, I'm, I really appreciate this. Hope this will happen again. And thank you, Tenji, for actually doing this because um, unfortunately, as producers, uh, people never really get to know how we work behind and what kind of challenges we come across. Uh, and also, with your normal um, TV station, there are certain things you're not allowed to say, and you are given really very limited time to talk about these things. And I really, really appreciate and I hope that we will have this kind of platform in future. Don't stop this now. Just keep on doing it. Don't do it just now because there's a the situation we have. Just make this a proper platform that will be ongoing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I plan to grow the platform, put to people together, let people work together and know each other. Next week, I'll be having all my boyfriends and I want them to discuss what the challenges they have dating me. Uh, darling, <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say um, a very big thank you. Um, it was um, it was a wonderful time, you know, as we were chatting and sharing. Every time I wasn't on and I had somebody else talking, apart from Tenju and Zamo, I would quickly go on Google and say, who's this person, who's Kofi, who's Coin? And I was checking because, yeah, these are people doing great things in their country and... I did not know about them before today. So this particular conversation has given me an opportunity to learn about them. Even I've checked out some of the people who are even, you know, dropping comments. So I've got to check, okay, who's this person, you know, because of some of the things that they would write. Okay, so it means this person knows something. So um, I believe for us to really grow as Africans and as African filmmakers, we cannot be as crabs always pulling everybody back into the barrel. We have to be people on whose shoulders um, you are willing to allow somebody to stand on your shoulder. That means you're willing to share knowledge, you're willing to share how you got to where you are so that others can also grow because you know the, the sky is big. The, 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 we're talking about a market of over a, a billion people. The market is big. No one person eats this market. There is enough to feed every single one of us across and if we make africa consume our content the entire world would want to consume our content because it means that the numbers are there and we have the numbers as africans to make our producers our movies popular you know it's, um I, I think it was kb that all that men talked about um, the marketing that in um, Hollywood content is coming here and we're already aware, it penetrates our market and we're already aware of it and we're, we're stepping over our own content to go and watch their own. If we put that same mindset in pushing our own, just as producers are increasing the, the value of their content, if those who consume that content also put that same mindset in consuming the content, then the, the in short, it's not the sky that will be in our limit. I think the Milky Way will be, that's what we'll be discussing our terms right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, my message to everyone at home and everyone who is watching is to make sure that you stay safe, wash your hands, but it doesn't mean ignore the body. Let's wash everything and let us make appropriate masks because I'm tired of seeing things like this. Let us make sure we are safe and we survive past this epidemic. Thank you so much. I love you all. Do subscribe to all our YouTube channels and do support us. Much love.